Hello, welcome back. We're gonna take a look at a company that uh, one of our subscribers has uh, suggested and that is a uh, whole earth brand sticker symbol free. And that's a very inspiring ticker symbol, isn't it? So this is a small company. You'll see that its market cap is sitting at uh, 300 million dollars almost. This is a company that you can find next door for the, for the most part, especially in the US. But uh, one of the things that's interesting and the first thing that I noticed when I initially was examining the company, because I do quite a lot of work before making these videos, examining the companies. And you will see here that the last 12 months, uh, there is no PE being reported, while in the next uh, 12 months, it's going to be 12. And this is atypical. You may be wondering why this is happening, because this points to a company that's ha that has negative income, and this points to a company that has a pretty awesome income compared to its stock price, and uh, that's earnings. And so that actually had me thinking, and I had to examine the company in detail, and which we will during the video. Bear in mind that when you are looking at these kinds of companies, because they are very, very small, you have to be very picky and you have to really understand what you are what you are seeing in the financial statements because the slightest discrepancy can really, really affect your decision. And also you need to bear in mind that regardless of whether you, you, know, you like the, the stock or the company, when you buy a company of that sort, you do have more risk just because of the of the size of the company but potentially you have more reward as well if it if it does well now let's start by taking a look at uh, the outstanding shares you'll see here that there has been a massive increase in that from 10 million in shares uh, to 400 for 41 million in shares and that's uh, quadrupling the outstanding shares count that alone would probably deter me from investing in the company uh, although I do understand that they wanted to pocket some money because of, um, I'm assuming, the increase of the stock price, uh, this is an insane increase in uh, the outstanding shares. And uh, that would really, really affect me if I was looking to, to purchase this company. I don't like this insane amount of dilution here. So bear that in mind. This is important. Now, the next thing we're going to examine is the income statement. And um, now is uh, where everything interesting starts, basically. So you will see here that uh, the company has been having some years where it had uh, like negative year over year growth, then almost close to zero, and then very nice uh, year over year growth. So that's uh, good to see. But let's go to the net income of the company and see what they are doing in terms of their uh, profit, which is basically the bottom line of the in income statement. Now you will see here that the company was making 20 million, 30 million, and then lost 42 million. And that had been thinking. And now you will see that in 2021, they actually made zero. So that's a massive discrepancy here and a steep decline. And I was wondering why. And so I started taking a little bit of a closer look at the financials here, examining it by line by line. And uh, as I was uh, scrolling, let me actually find the line over here. Uh, I, not I noticed this, the EBITDA including unusual items. And you will see that the other unusual items here have been 23 million and 5.5 million. Now this is significant uh, for, the for this kind of company that's, uh, that has a net income of like uh, 3 million or 4 million. And uh, these unusual items point to items that are like one-time uh, uh, expenses. And so this is a one-time expense and this is one, a one-time expense. So next year, you could be seeing a, a slash as well here and going back to this kind of uh, uh, expenses here, uh, this kind of uh, earnings, basically, EBITDA, earnings before taxes, EBT is the specific one. And so uh, this can really, really skew the results. And uh, as you can understand, if you're looking, let's, let's take a look at the net income again. If you're looking at, uh, let's say, this line, which is 0.1, if you add this 22 million, or in this case it was 5 million, then we have 7 million here. And uh, over here, if we add this 23 million back, we have minus 20 million, which is still a loss. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's less than uh, what you actually would think if you were looking at this because of this unusual item. So this is something that you have to factor in your, um, in your consideration about the company. And I, th I wanted you to, to understand this because this is, this is important here. And uh, yeah, the, this kind the, again, these kinds of companies can play with uh, these very, very small details. And so it, um, it really, it really uh, helps to understand what's going on with uh, some of these finer details. 
and in order to see why there is uh, this kind of discrepancy in the financials and the reported uh, net income. Now if we take a look at the balance sheet here, uh, you will see that the company's total assets are increasing, which is obviously a good thing, especially for these kinds of small companies, you do want them to uh, you know, better their balance sheet. And the total equity, however, here has been decreasing a little bit because of the total liabilities of the company, which have been uh, pretty high as well. And so bringing down the, the total equity of the company, sitting at 300 million. Now the cash flow, you will see that the cash flow operations uh, is decreasing and that's something that I don't really like to see. Uh, you can of course get a full breakdown here, but for the most part, things are similar. I mean, there are no insane changes here. Again, there are some write-offs and things of that sort. But uh, for the most part, you should expect it to be around the same ballpark. And um, yeah, this seems to be have some to, to be having some, you know, some stalling uh, operating cash flow here, which is uh, definitely not great to see. So the next thing comes from investing here is in the negative, uh, some acquisitions uh, and uh, capital expenditures about the same uh, every year. And in uh, financing, the company is getting a little bit of debt and uh, long term for the most part. And uh, yeah, just repaying some uh, older debt pretty much. The free cash flow, again, this is really, really skewed from operating income. So as operating income goes down, you can expect um, the free cash flow to go down as well, typically. It, it's also a factor of uh, the capital expenditures, of course, but typically the cash flow operations is what plays uh, the biggest role. And um, again, you will see here that um, there is a little bit of a decline, like, for example, in the operating activities total here, for example. And even though there is a stock based compensation added back, we still have a le lower, a lower cash from operations, uh, lower cash from operations activities from, uh, from operating activities for 2021 than what we had uh, before, especially 2018 and 19, which were great years, it looks like for the company. And so the free cash flow here is uh, kind of going down again, same with the net income as you would kind of expect, kind of uh, typical. And it's something that we don't like to see because now uh, we are not really making money out of our investment. It looks like the company is uh, close to zero or actually losing money. And when we're buying these kinds of companies, we do want the growth. We want them to be uh, continually making more and more money. And uh, we really, really hate to see them actually losing money and not growing because uh, that's uh, can really kill a company and especially new investors coming in and so the multiples here is a, it's a good thing that they are very low um, the enterprise value compared to sales that's a good thing anything below three and the profitability is basically zero as you see here i mean the company is not really making any return on equity as you would kind of expect and um, compared to the equity we kind of already saw that the company has a lot of debt as well now that's not uh, necessarily very concerning, but it is uh, a first step to being concerned, I would say. So it's not great either. And the Altman Z score is 127. It's uh, kind of getting in concerning territory, but uh, that wouldn't really concern me that much. What would mostly concern me is the company making free cash flow in the next few years. And so if, uh, if, we, t if we examine, and um, this is a company that uh, it's gonna be tough to use a free cash flow model on, just because it's all over the place but uh, what i can uh, what what we can see here is that um, as you can see the market cap is sitting at uh, almost 300 million so if the company goes back to this kind of free cash flow we're seeing uh, 27 here 27.6 i would potentially be willing to give it a multiple of 15 here and so in that case we are looking at a company that should be traded at uh, 414 uh, million for a market cap, which is actually more than the, actu the current market cap. And that would be a good opportunity to buy right now. But uh, currently we're looking at a company that's making, I don't know, maybe 2 million or 4 million. I don't know what's gonna be happening in the next year. But um, if we're looking at a company that is making, let's just say uh, 10 uh, million next year, then uh, we give it a multiple of 15 and uh, we are you know we are a little bit uh, uh, below the current market cap and so we'd like to get it at uh, almost half its price uh, half its current price and so it's a little bit of assumption based and um, as you noticed here already 
you will see in the overview tab, and this is what I mentioned earlier, the expected next 12 uh, months uh, PE is sitting at 12, which means that analysts anticipate that the company will be m making much more net income than what it used to make. And so if we take a look at the estimates here, we can potentially see what, uh, you know, what they think really, what uh, analysts think. And um, you will see, for example, that uh, uh, the next, uh, you know, the next revenues here, the next um, uh, quarter, basically, the projected ones are actually less. So the growth is negative here. And um, what about the fiscal year? You will see that they're projecting higher revenues here. And um, yeah, t basically the whole year it's going to be a, an increase of 8% and then an increase of 6%. Now, that could happen, but I'm not so sure how that would uh, bring the P that low. Uh, that's, that's a little bit unclear and maybe too confident. So there are a lot of unknowns here, as you can understand, with these kinds of companies. And um, I understand the fact that it has dropped so much. Uh, if I were to enter this kind of company personally, I, I'd want to get it at a cheaper price, for sure. Especially since it has decreasing revenues and decreasing free cash flow and net income. This is one of the things that I hate seeing in a company, to tell you the truth. Actually, the revenues are increasing, so it's a good thing. So sales are increasing. But especially when the sales are increasing and the net income is decreasing, uh, that's something that I don't like. And we did examine that there are some one-time one, uh, one -time write offs here. But again, this is a, a massive, a steep loss. It's like uh, 70 million. It, it, it's not reflected by this uh, uh, decrease alone. So there has been some stalling happening here and uh, the same in 2021. So I really, really don't like companies that have suppressing net income here and suppressing cash flow. So this thing can be a killer and uh, I, I find that there's a lot of risk with that. Now, do you want to potentially take the risk to have some, re some unexpected reward in the future? You, you may have to think about it, but uh, you know, if you're valuing the company in terms of a value investment, I just don't see how you can actually enter here. Maybe, you, maybe you'd want to wait for the next couple of quarters or the next year and see how it's going to be doing. And if you get a better picture there and uh, you understand more about the, this one-time uh, charges, maybe, maybe you can then enter uh, the company. But don't just get dragged into the company because it lost a lot of its value. That doesn't mean much. In the stock market, cheap can get more expensive, but typically cheap gets cheaper unless there is something important, some sort of... Um, catalyst that actually changes the how the company is operating financially and then cheap starts getting more expensive but there has to be a reason for that and so we don't see that here at least yet so hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully it helped you a little bit and thanks a lot for the suggestion and hope uh, you guys uh, anybody else who's watching the video you enjoyed this one as well and if you are new here please remember to subscribe and please leave a like as well because uh, these videos take quite a lot of time to make and, uh, you know, if you like those, uh, you, they will be recommended to more people and we'll have a, you know, a deeper community here, a bigger community. So thank you for watching this one as well. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.